Welcome back to Entrendia's. We're looking at a discount cash flow model in Python. What does DCF do? Well, it's a valuation method used to estimate the intrinsic value of a stock or an investment based on the expected future cash that it generates. So DCF attempts to figure out the value on an investment today based on the projections of how much money it'll make in the future. Why might we want to consider a discount cash flow model? For stock valuation, free cash flow is king. Stocks and business valuation emphasizes the critical importance of a company's ability to generate cash. If it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. DCF estimates the future cash flow to value today's stock price. Money in the future is worth less than money today. For example, if someone were to offer you $1,000 today, or if you had to wait a year to get the $1,000, you'd obviously pick $1,000 right now. Inflation, on average, 2% increase. So that $1,000 in one year will be worth less than today. So we would need to discount the future cash flows to find out what they're worth right now. So what are the steps to the discount cash flow model? In this first video, we'll do step one and generate the data from Yahoo Query and estimate the future cash flows by a average uh, growth rate and we'll generate the next five to 10 years worth of free cash flow. Steps two through six will be in the second video where we will create a custom Python function that'll consider the discount rate, present value, and terminal values of a stock. And then at the very end, we'll output the value per share that the DCF model considers the company should be worth at. So to start us off, let's use some popular imports like pandas, datetime, and numpy, but we'll be using Yahoo Query to get data from financial statements. Just to be able to show you what the output looks like for our uh, financial statements. I'm going to have pandas output the max rows so that we can see all of the uh, line items. And then in this video, we'll use Apple as the example. And then the ticker function is from uh, Yahoo Query, and this will allow us to gather data about Apple. Okay, so now that we have that, free cash flow is in the cash flow statement. So to keep this model simple, we are going to gather the cash flow statement and put it into a data frame. So what's nice about Yahoo Query, it's really simple. Since we stored our ticker symbol in stock, we can then say, give me the cash flow. So the cash flow function here will generate back a data frame. And it's going to be full of these line items that we can uh, take advantage of. Uh, I've reviewed how to get financial statements in Python using uh, Yahoo Query in a previous video, so check that out if you'd like to get balance sheets and income statements. To continue on, we want to ensure that the as of date column is indeed a date time. So in order to uh, convert this column from a string type into a date time, we can say pandas dot to date time. And then the column that we're trying to change, which is a date time. We would also want the date time, or excuse me, as of date column to be the index. It's not really helpful to have the symbol as the index. It doesn't offer any further information. We already know we selected Apple. So we're gonna take the pandas dot set index and then which column do we want as the index since this is time series data we will say as of date and in place true okay so cash period 
Uh, period type and currency code, these two columns are pretty redundant. We know that it's in USD and we know that 2020, 2021, 2022, so it's 12 month interval. So these columns aren't really necessary and they're taking up some space. So we could free up this data frame by keeping these values in a stored data frame, or excuse me, in a stored variable. So if I want to keep the cash period, I can say period type, and then I'm going to store uh, 12 month. So DF cash is equal to DF cash dot I lock and I only want I only want the columns that start from beginning cash flow position and then everything towards the right. I really don't want these two columns. They don't offer any information that I'm interested in. So I'm going to say um, period type is column zero, because remember, as of date is now the index. Currency code is now index one. And then beginning cash position is index two. So provide me everything at index two and beyond. So this is what this iLock is telling Python to do. Finally, I have the cache. Let's see how it looks. And that's perfect. I have the as of day as the index because this is a time series data set. And then we want to find where the uh, cash flow is, free cash flow. So around here, it might be in that ellipses that the free cash flow is in this data frame. So instead of searching for it, I could just say, give me free cash flow. And then there it is. So we have a uh, float 64 D type, so that's good. Free cash flow is coming in as a uh, float numeric data type, so that's great. So now we have the historic free cash flow, but for the uh, discount cash flow model, we also need to know the historic net debt. So let's get the historic. net debt. So how would we do that? Well, net debt uh, comes from the balance sheet. So we're going to do the same thing that we did, except create a DF balance data frame. So data frame stock, which is Apple, and we're going to use the balance sheet function. And this is going to provide us with a balance sheet data frame. So similar setup here. Um, however, we have less uh, less dates compared to the cash flow. We had 2024 in our cash flow, but in our balance sheet, we're missing 2024. So uh, unfortunately with Yahoo, uh, unless you get a subscription or you know pay API, uh, we're handling only so much data. Uh, so we're going to perform the same uh, steps that we did. We're going to ensure that as of date is indeed a date type. So PD.2 date time DF balance. What are we converting into a date type as of date? DF balance, we want that as the index because having symbol Apple as the index is not really helpful. So again, we can keep these two fields. Uh, if you want, you can keep them in a variable, but I'm just going to go ahead and ignore them. So 
what do I want from DF balance? I want everything from column two and beyond. So we're going to say that just like we did previously for DF cash. And then here you go. You have as of date. This is a time series data, so that's good. And then we have our line items. So finally, I only want to see net debt. I don't need the entire data frame. So where is net debt located? I could just say, uh, let's create a variable and select the column with net debt as the name. And I want the most recent net debt value. So for our sake, the most recent data that we have is from 2023. So that's just going to be what we get. So I lock negative one means we're on the last row and we're selecting the net debt column. And that value is going to be our new variable. So once I so, uh, print out net debt, we're going to see that uh, Apple's got a lot of debt. <laughs> it's kind of hard to read without the commas, but that's how you get the net debt. Okay. Sweet. So now that we did that, we're going to create a list of the future, excuse me, historic cash flows so that we can calculate what the future free cash flow might be. So let's create a custom function that's going to turn a pandas column into a list. So column to list seems like a good name. Uh, we're going to have a data frame input and then a column name input. So let's create a data list variable. And here is where the user is going to say, hey, from my data frame and from this column, convert it into a list. And then this data list, we're going to do a list comprehension to ensure that there are no nulls in our list. So let's say x for x in data list if pd dot not null then x. So this list comprehension goes through the entire list, ensures that there are no nulls and that our data has the values. And then we're going to return this list. We're going to return a nice clean list. So let's say, uh, I don't know why shortcuts came up. Okay. Thank you, Jupyter. That was very helpful. Uh, let's say historic free cash flow, FCF. And we're going to say column to list. We're going to leverage our brand new custom function. And the data frame that we're interested in is DF cache. We just created this. And then the column name is DF cache flow. And then once I print out the historic free cache flow, the output is our brand new list. So now from a pandas data frame from Yahoo query, we now have a free cache flow historic list. Okay, next for our model, we need to calculate the average growth rate of FCF or simple uh, for simple forecasting. So uh, now that we have a list, we can figure out what the mean is using NumPy. So FCF average growth rate. So np.mean, so we have historic free cash flow, and we're going to, again, uh, do some arithmetic here, but we're going to take the first free cash flow, and then we're going to minus the previous historic free cash flow, so we can say i minus 1. And then we're going to divide this by the historic previous free cash flow, I minus one. 
and we'll say for i in range one and then the length of the historic free cash flow. So what this does is calculates the historic uh, percent change in the free cash flow and then calculates the mean of those changes. So at the end, we will have a single growth rate value and it's at 10%. So that sounds pretty high, but it's a simple average uh, growth rate. And for Apple, it looks like it's at 10%. And then now that we have this average growth rate, we can extend this average growth rate out into the future to say, hey, maybe Apple will make X amount of money in the future. So how many uh, years do we want to forecast? Let's do uh, five years for now. And then the future FCF is equal to the historic. We're going to do another list comprehension here. Uh, historic free cash flow of negative one. So we want the most recent free cash flow and then apply that 10% growth to it. So we're going to multiply by one plus FCF average growth rate. And then I plus one for I in range future years. And that's going to be five. So now we'll have a brand new list of the future free cash flow right here. So this is our brand new future list, future free cash flows. So finally, just to visualize what we just created here, we can do a matplotlib, and I'm going to fast forward and focus on the code here. We have historical years of 2020 to 2024, and then our forecast years, which is 2025 to 2029. Um, future state of the code, we can create a more dynamic way to generate these lists. Um, so we can combine the data for plotting so that the x-axis has all the years. And then we'll do a map plot of the historic years and the forecast years. We're going to distinguish the color between the two so that you could tell which is forecast versus actuals. And then this is all just making life pretty. And once we showcase the plot, we can see that from Yahoo Query, we got the historic free cash flow in blue. And then what we did was create the future forecasted free cash flows based on the average growth rate found here. So we're seeing the free cash flow increase in Apple. And this free cash flow list is going to be used to calculate intrinsic value based off DCF. So that's going to be the next video uh, will calculate the intrinsic value of Apple based on this rather simple uh, average growth rate model in future cash flow. If you like this type of content, if you like this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It does mean the most and it does help the channel grow. So I appreciate you watching and coding with me. And check out Entrendias.com for free buy and sell signals on your favorite stocks, cryptos, and Forex, and I will see you guys in the next one.